Session. Yeah, one of my reasons behind it being secret is I don't know what the hell I'm going to tell you as in it's going to change a month from now. Like, I think about that all the time. What do you mean? Like, if we were to do this two months ago, I'd give you a whole nother fucking answer. It's so strange. Bro. Yeah, like, but but I, would you... So, so secret in the sense of like, we're not going to release it. I'm down to see it years from now. Or it depends. Or do you want to... Yeah, I'm going to ask you how you want to do it. Because, uh, I mean, either or... Because it's interesting, like, say, when this comes out, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to be doing five months from now. I might be playing with Play-Doh or something. Hmm. That's, like, the weird kind of guy. Like, if you were to ask, so, tell me about yourself as an artist, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to tell you. Because it's going to, yeah. Because the answer might be different. It always is, road. man. And it's it, it it's kind of weird, because I've been thinking about just this situation, because when I get asked about my art all the time, my, my answer is, I'm just training. Like, I don't actually know what I want to do, which is weird. I just, all I know is that I got to train. I'm just going to keep drawing. I'm just going to keep painting because there's a skill level I want to be at. But what I want to do with it, I have no clue, bro. And, you know, I just, because like, well, kind of back to what we were saying earlier, I just do it because it, I like the act of painting. Yeah. You know, I like the act of drawing, but... Things get really weird when people ask me like to do things for them, because sometimes I just don't want to do shit. <laughs> and I'm yeah, and it's like I don't like people will be hey, uh, when are you gonna put out some new clothes? And I'm just like I don't even I don't know. See, that was me two years ago. So you don't like 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 being dictated what to do in a way by the no, market. Well, for sure, for sure that like I I. I love saying I'm a barber first. I'm going to cut hair regardless. That is what I will do. Okay. So yeah. that's locked in. That's not going to change. I doubt it. I doubt it. I Yeah, I big doubt that will change. But it's it's to the point where like I like being selfish with what I'm doing artistically because I'm not a part of something or because I'm not like, you know, I'm not part of some firm or whatever. Like I have to design for said people. With the, I never see it for money necessarily. I'm just going to do it. And what happens? I don't know. Yeah. So, a little rundown. You have been painting a lot recently. Right now, this yeah, is a definitely. little creative session in progress. <laughs> painting while talking and you be doing watercolors. But, shout out, you just dropped off a big piece. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I swooped at... Um, I view this as my, you listen to that Jay-Z 444 album where he talks about buying a piece for like two mil. Now it's worth like six mil. Hey, that's, that's, that's real. That's what I'm doing with this piece. No, okay. I'm glad you, you because I, um, I got to give you a real certificate. I did intend for this to be the first, and I want to serialize these, like the first certificate of authenticity. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, I need to make it still, but I gotta, I gotta send it to you. Like this was gonna be literally the first, cause like I've thought about this lately. When I post something on Instagram, it's sometimes it's just me training. Like this is just me practicing shit. Yeah, I don't like you know I'm not taking it too seriously, and I have to always remind myself that like this is all for fun, you know. But then you know, then there comes like what did you just put out to the world, and what is published? That is published. I want, you know, like I'll put out random shit all the time. I show my works in progress all the time. But that is something I like. Yeah, that's from me. You know, it's not something I, I studied from something. It's not like because I study other people's art. I'll copy people's art all mm -hmm. the time just to know how to make that color, just to, you know, reverse engineer what people do. Mm. So like people see those all the time and I don't even necessarily want to claim them. You know what I mean? It's just training. I like the aspect of training. I actually have a similar approach to some of the verses I'd be writing for music, where I actually got onto a um, a beat that was by um, Locksmith, uh, Bay Area Locksmith, Bay Area Locksmith, <laughs> and you know how Frontline. he's like a rapper's rapper in the sense of like he can rap bars around you with his multis and things like that, right? And that's not my style of rapping. But then I was like, let me practice. Yeah, let yeah, me try yeah, to yeah, copy. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right? And I definitely 
haven't written like that in any other tracks. But then I went multis and dense and mad flows in the practice one that I did, right? So I think there is merit in that. Uh, I do think, though, at least what I've been thinking about in terms of music and art is finding that voice of your own, right? And yeah, definitely. And that uniqueness, because I had a homegirl that came in, and I was like, damn, she's really found her fucking voice. Because I've seen her go from uh, more just classic rap before onto some tracks, a little Lauryn Hill inspired, and now is in her lane of this R and B hip hop where it's her sound. I was like, damn. Did she's you, been did you ask her work. about how she found that? Yeah. Just creating more. It's yeah, just constant yeah, creating, and then experimenting. Like, hmm, let me try this. I didn't think I'm a singer, but. Let me try some of the singing. And it fucking turns out that she's a good singer mm. in that lane. Because even within singing, there's different lanes and styles of singing, right? You're going to be the Absolutely. Beyonce singing. Absolutely. You're going to be SZA singing. You're going to be like a more Corrine Bailey Ray singing, right? There is a Shuts range. <laughs> yeah. And so having that, that experiment and that process to find it, has now strengthened her, right? And so that did make me think because I'm on this weird, I think there's two sides of my music where I love hip hop and rap and writing for rappers. Like, look how dope my fucking verses and bars are. I can pack in dense uh, metaphors and multi-syllable rhymes and Things that will go over your head if you don't understand it on rapgenius.com. <laughs> and then I have the other side where I love these love songs and these ballads on the guitar. Sometimes sounds folksy or like like a, a range of R&B infused also, but also like classic Filipino harana love story type songs. And where is that? connection between those two worlds for the sound and that's what i'm exploring right now and it's fun to <laughs> explore but it's also i guess sparks some insecurity at times of like i don't have my sound yet right yeah definitely definitely <laughs> and that that whole conversation right it it was sparked i thought of that because of what you said about practicing and copying others but then, have you started to discover your style? Yeah, definitely. Like, was that a question to me? Yes. Yeah, so I, I have a style because there is an undoubted style of what my, like, landscape shit is. Because if we're going to talk landscapes, I've, like, I swear to you, I've probably drawn like five, six, seven hundred castles in the sky. Mm. Like, you just, you know, like that's something I've been doing as a kid. I've, I've always painted landscapes. So when people see me paint like a scenery, like folks grew up seeing that shit. And then, you know. Castles in the sky. Why castles in the sky? I, I don't exactly know where it originally came from, but there's been a lot of castles that I just be seeing in the sky. Not, not in real life, but like, um, it probably started with Kingdom Hearts, if I'm gonna be honest. If you ever oh, played yeah, that, yep. yeah. So remember back in the gummy ships, you'd 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 fly to the world, and I never really went through the game. I also played that the battle one, like the fighting one. Oh shit! They the have the one. Tekken style Kingdom Heart, like <laughs> where or where that guy was in that, like the main character was one of the fighters oh, okay okay i forgot what exactly game that was <laughs> but uh and then i would play like some levels but i never went through the full story mode of kingdom hearts yeah it's it's a well it's a fucking crazy wild um story with some square enix shit merging with disney obviously it's cool yeah cool like concept. really think about it at the time who the fuck gave the okay to that i've thought about that like somebody in both in parties. Disney also big yeah man they took a, they took a risk back then I, I applaud them because what the fuck 
Like, you really have Mickey Mouse here committing acts of violence against these weird shadow things, which is <laughs> dope as fuck. <laughs> but, um, there, yeah, I think I've seen Castles in the Sky a lot just because of that game. Like, you would just, when you're in space and you go from world to world, you see this uh, cartooned version of a world put together like a castle just floating in space. And I was like, yo, that shit's tight as fuck. And then, like, years later... Uh, this rapper named Son of Ran drops his album with called Sky City, and there's this big ass fucking like the point of view is you're in the sky looking at that castle, looking down at it, and I was just like, whoa, this is wild. And ever since then, oddly, that's just been a theme in my life. I would just like look up at someone, like, yo, what if there was a fucking castle just chilling right there? And then uh, sometimes like when I'm doing little like landscapes like this and there's enough sky room all right let's throw a castle in there <laughs> yeah that shit's sick man castles in the sky there's a song from Le Miserable that talks about a castle in the sky who's that uh Le Miserable the musical have you ever heard of that? Oh, that. Okay, yeah. I didn't even know it was pronounced that. I was like... I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct. Les, Les, Les Miserables. Mis 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. I just to say No, I feel you, bro. I never Les knew Les how to actually, like, what that was. Yeah. That's tight. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, there's a song in there. Uh, <laughs> I forgot how it goes. Dream the dream of... Uh, I don't even know if that's from the musical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Just last how I remember it, though. Yeah, yeah. But there's a line in one of the songs I feel about Castle in the Sky. Well, that's dope. I do enjoy your landscapes. It is interesting to see you post more of it. But right? that, yeah. And art. It's and also, art in general. like, what I mean by, like, when I do them, they're truly studies. As in, like, right now, what, what's the color of a shadow? Have you thought about that? Like, what's the color of a shadow? If an object is white, what does a shadow become? Sometimes it's purple. You know, if that shadow, if, if it's grass per se, was that grass yellow or green to begin with? What does a shadow become? A whole weird blue. But like, you know, a shadow's never black. So when you're painting, you're not using black. So I, I have to study actual life before I'm able to fuck with it. Mm. yeah and then you know that's what i mean by some people just don't understand why i'm random and it's like why because i'm still training bro give me like two years so why do you <laughs> why do you start with our visual art you've been drawing since you were young yeah if i were to say there was one complete natural affinity of mine it would definitely be this like apparently like when i was a kid my mom tried to take away this pencil from my hand and like, because I was going to hurt myself with it kind of thing. I was like a baby. So, and then uh, I would, nah, I fought her. I was like, nah, I want this pen. And then she said, yeah, if I gave you the pen, then you're okay. Like, you, you, that was your favorite thing. You didn't want to get rid of it. And I was like, eh, tight, that's cool. I could see that. <laughs> and then you've been drawing since you were a kid. Yeah, uh, I've definitely been drawing since I was a kid. I was, uh, like... At a young ass age, I was just drawing naturally, and a lot of my uncles saw that, and they were like, "The fuck? Okay, hold up, let's uh, let's see what he could do." Mm. And then uh, it was tight, man. Like I learned a bunch of shit. Like uh, when I was in second, third grade, I had an uncle give me some sharpies. It was like, "Okay, only draw with a pen. I want to see what happens." And then there was a moment in time I was like, "Cool, we could just do that." And then. I was in my head, I was like, cool, maybe one day I could do tattoos or some shit, you know? Mm. Yeah, hella funny. <laughs> and you became a barber. And I think, you know, being a barber, there's art to that. Oh, there definitely in is. In the sense yeah, of the visual is. art of the fucking lineup and the, the fade. And it's just so funny that it's become a meme, but it's so true the confidence boost you get with a good ass haircut. Uh, that is a fact. Yeah, that, that is one hundred percent a fact. Absolute fact. And that makes <laughs> sense of taking care of yourself and how you look, right? And self hygiene and all that. But it's just so funny how some some folks can fucking switch, like how they look. It's, that's why 
I would have thought you would be on the barber shit on TikTok because there's some funny barber uh, videos. Nah, them so. shits are funny, bro. I ain't gonna there, lie. Them shits are funny fucking ones. funny, dog. There's some hella funny ones of like <laughs> them fucking around with their clients. That of, like, shit, nah, yeah. Fucking, <laughs> fucking caressing them and like yeah, looking at them. That and stuff. shit's dumbass funny. The shit like them using the blower like high pressure Bruh, I blower. want that I, I, I legitly want that and if I get it oh I'm gonna fuck with all y'all but, like <laughs> no one's safe bro <laughs> that shit is hella funny but also the the ones of like the before and afters there's some clean before and afters <laughs> now nah, you be seeing okay one of my boys over in Millbread he just opened up a shop called the Blendistry he started this and I ever since then me and my other boy Dom we've been fucking around we do it every now and then but uh We'll do like on the Instagram of before and we'll we'll take who it is, we'll zoom the fuck in and on the after, it's a whole nother guy. <laughs> it's a whole nother guy, bro. You get called up? No, that shit's up? hella funny, bro. I I like sometimes I'll be telling my homie, like, hey bro, let me do this real quick. I'm I won't even do it after, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> shit, oh my god. And have you posted it? I, I'll do it a few times, bro. Like, yeah, shouts out my boy fucking Garrett Lee, bro. That Garrett dude he, Lee. he started that shit. I started dying. It's <laughs> reminding me of our times in Barber College, we used to fuck around a lot. That shit was dumbass footy. Shout out to Bahai. Yeah, little Bahi, Bahai. Back in the day. Bay Area Hair Institute here on El Camino Real. That was a long Dude, ass time. I still got my hair cut there. Do you really? Yeah, Ty, Ty, yeah. Do you have homies that go to school there? No, I just nah. go with Okay, whoever. That, that's sick. No, nah, sometimes I, I when know. I'm in the area, I'll, I'll stop by just to see who's there to see if uh, maybe one of my old instructors is there, but he ain't. I was like, damn, fair enough. Well, they they actually transitioned pretty quick. Like, I would say, I I, I would I've gotten cut by more than uh, maybe fifteen to twenty different barbers there. Oh, nice. Like nice, over the nice. years, right? Um, or even more, I would think now. But yeah, bit. I've been consistently just like they're good. Like you know, also with simple fades and uh cuts and a lot of them have actually been cutting that's what i'm saying it's a different world today yeah like definitely there's folks who've been cutting like yeah no one really learns how to cut hair in in school and if you do that's what's up because you're definitely around folks who definitely can show you shit like when we were at school we were so bored we're like oh bro you want help bro dope let me let me show you how to do this like, <laughs> we were that bored bro we weren't really learning i'll be honest <laughs> damn <laughs> throw them under the bus why don't no you? no i'll be honest barber college is you learning from each other like when you go to school you're just learning how to pass your test it's not like you're not learning how to fade fade your mm. your own like schoolmates are showing you how to do that if you don't know how to mm. already mm. I actually saw that in practice the other day. One was showing the other dude, like, oh, this is what you do, like that. And yeah. the guy, I, I think the guy being cut, he looked a little nervous. He was like, oh, fuck, he's learning just right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's hella funny because we used to laugh at situations like that. And we'd be like, yeah, bro, just, just do it, bro. You're good. <laughs> we're, you know, we're not the ones doing it. And we, we're legitally trying to help. Like, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. shit is hella funny, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I miss that shit. <laughs> and we'd be like, hey, bro, watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, dead ass. Like, you gotta, you gotta fuck up some haircuts if yeah. you're trying to get nice. That is a fact. Yeah. Chop it up with that me a little a bit. fucking fact. Chop it up with me a little bit about your life as a barber because i actually heard of you before um through joe because (laughs) of you being his barber and how you be chopping it up with the community he spoke so much good about you before (laughs) i even met you about um like the connectedness you have with your community as a barber well definitely right man i'm blessed for that and just like catching the vibes consistently you know so what what's the experience like for you? Uh cutting hair is dope as fuck, man. Like it's something I oddly did not plan to do. And that that blows people's minds sometimes cuz uh like yeah, it wasn't always like a career choice for Filipinos, bro. <laughs> like definitely was not. There was a time cuz I was I've been cutting hair since 5th grade. Mm-hmm. Like some people looked and like, "Wait, you were like 10 years old?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> Did I want to cut hair like that? Not necessarily, but it was just something we did. Because mm. my cousin who used to cut my hair, he moved uh, to go to college. And I was like, fuck. 
what am I gonna do? I'm not like, like I'm not gonna let my pops cut my hair again and give me a crazy ass mullet. <laughs> oh five, you know. I was like, <laughs> fuck, dude. A hey, mullet's lightweight. Coming yeah, bro. Back. No, yeah. no, it's funny because they are, bro. It's, and I'm, 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 I'm like, I think of my dad. I'm like, you know, did you just wait till this came full circle for you? I'm not a fan. I'll be honest. I would never <laughs> rock that shit, bro. But more people are rocking. No, I've been giving them, man. And then like, it's funny because the folks in my chair are like, hey, you think it's gonna look cool? I'm like, well, hey, man, everything does, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know because if you can pull it off and this dude definitely pulled it off yeah. but it's like hey man it's all on how you rock that yeah yeah but oh man dude <laughs> that shit's hilarious hey, you really need a good fade on the side to make it work i think yeah you know, bro you, know, you gotta be like, clean and you gotta have the swag of it but some people there's a transition it. into that mullet and if you don't pull it off correctly it's just like bro you, you mm. just leave that alone or something like mm. especially when it gets too long like yeah you gotta do something with it bro something mm. 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 <laughs> oh man mm. and how is it how is it like in terms of chopping it up? I know you'd be enjoying the vibes of chopping it up with folks. Yeah, like man. In the chair. That shit is lit, bro, cuz the realities of being a barber for so long is you just chill there all day talking to your friends all day. That's what it look that's what it seems like to us. We don't think about it. Like I'm not thinking about what to do. Maybe if you throw me a curveball like, "Hey, bro, let's switch it up today." And then cool. Let me calculate it real quick. What am I doing? And then just get to work. It's so, it's like second nature. But it's like, you know, it's tight because I'm always plugged in with my folks. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I always know what people's up to. And I, I don't think about it until, let's say, my nine o'clock bleeds into a little like of 10. So my 10 o'clock coming in, whole bump into my dude at nine. And they may not have seen each other in years. And in my head, damn, y'all, for real? Like, I just, I see y'all on our regular, and y'all have not seen each other since mm -hmm. high school? Oh, mm -hmm. shit. That happens all the time, and I don't realize, like, how plugged in I am. Mm. It's like, oh, this is, this is fucking dope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, I just, I just be seeing y'all all the time. This, mm. Like, I don't think about it. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty tight, and, like, just how close, or just how small Union City is. Yeah. Dumbass small. I mean, we all had one high school. And it's tight because which one was it? Is it Lincoln? No. Uh, James Logan. James Logan. I can't. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. Say, you know, Logan. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's so fucking like we had. I think my um my freshman class was eleven or twelve hundred students. It's what? a huge ass school. Yeah, I went. To, I went to school with like five thousand kids. It's so so. It's only one high school, but it's a huge ass high school. Yeah, one fat ass high school. Apparently, we're like as big as some community colleges and shit. Supposedly, oh, shit. yeah, that's so um, fucking huge. <laughs> thousand two hundred, you said, for your freshman class. Yeah, apparently I, we were the biggest freshman class like Logan had at the time. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I might be wrong, but I think. My freshman, my class is like 400 people or like 500, something like that. That's not standard, right? I don't see. Union yeah, City heads don't know what idea, standard actually. is, bro. We yeah. just went to school with hella people and it was normal. Hella Filipinos. Union uh, not, not necessarily. There are, but it's not just Filipinos. And I love that. I fucking love that. What was it? What's the mix like? Like I, I, I grew up with hella Vietnamese folks. So uh, hell of Vietnamese folks, like bro, like a lot of them are family to me. It's lit as fuck. Cause it's it's funny when I'm at one of their parties and I'm all asking where's the Bombayo if they made that shit. <laughs> like yo, cause I can't just buy this shit out of fuss store. Like yo, what's up? Your mom makes some Bombayo or what? Why was that? What is that? I don't. It's like a shrimp cake. You gotta have it though. Uh -huh. You gotta you gotta try this shit out. And they don't have it at the fuss spots. Nah, cause it's, it's, it's it takes too long to. It's not right. worth it. Like uh -huh. folks were like, you know, we don't just make this shit all the time. Uh -huh. I'm like damn. Uh -huh. Yeah, like it's it's sometimes it's even wrapped in like Suman kind of thing. So it's one of those mm. kind of jobs. That shit takes forever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> that shit, yeah. Dude, it. I do like eating other fucking culture foods, bro. All the time. And bro. it's funny that not everything is represented in the restaurants, right? Like, even when you take Filipino food, right? There's a whole wide range of shit that I love. That's like never Ilocano there. food that's not in the Filipino restaurants. 
Pinapa Itan. I only know <laughs> fucking Goldilocks sells that. Do they really? And, yeah, the one here. Oh, about in, to say. In Westboro. Not all of them. I think it's dependent on the owner and the cook here. Yeah, I was about but, to say, I've never seen that shit anyway. Yeah, I haven't. I can't think off the top of my head another spot that sells Papa Itan consistently. So whenever I'm craving for some warrior boost, I'm like, I'm going to get myself Papa Itan, bro. <laughs> Like right before my jiu-jitsu competitions. That's your thing? I eat the papa <laughs> eaters, so I'm like, it's my warrior food. Oh, man. And I'm a fucking win because of this. And I eat like dinuguan. I'm like, yeah, that's the fucking You blood. need that blood <laughs> fucking fuel you real quick. The fire of the animal. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's tight, dude. I feel that actually works a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard though. <laughs> like, oh, let's get, we in this thing now. We're in this thing now, bro. I cut weight and I'm gonna. Imagine, bro, this. looking at you warm up for for your match, and he just sees you pull up this see through black Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is he eating, bro? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Fucking it's the blood of my me. opponents, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's wild. That's wild. That's, wild. that's some stupid shit. It's the blood of my opponents. That'd be I crazy. Know. This one that actually made me. Um, before we talk about what we were talking about a while ago about relationships and shit, because I want to capture that on some fucking um, immortalize my lessons learned, <laughs> but also on some Filipino shit. You be coming from a lineage of straight up from the mountain. Like oh, I do, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, give me a little rundown on that. So, um, growing up, my pops always told us that we just weren't normal Filipinos. I never exactly knew what he meant, though. All he said was, "We're from the the mountains," and that's all I understood at the time, and that's all I knew. Hmm. And uh, None of us really asked grandpa about it because he just never likes talking about it. And uh, I've learned like why that is because it's just being indigenous is interesting. I don't have their experience of what it was like growing up in the Philippines and the stigma of being like indigenous at the time. So because I, I know that there's folks who like were discriminated mm -hmm. like and they feel a certain way and they feel they're even weirded out that like. Oh, this shit's tight to y'all right now? This shit's cool to y'all? Mm. You know, like, I, I, I see that shit around. And I'm mm. glad I'm not, like, I'm not even too, um, what's the word, involved with any of that. But there was a time I had questions. I had some real questions. I was like, okay, so we're uh, mountain people, but, like, where exactly? Mm. And then I always thought it was in Mindoro, mm. where my mom and dad are from. And then Pops is like, nah, it's the wrong island. Like, we're talking about up north, where up in, like, La Union, mm -hmm. where, like, the other side of his family's from. I was like, oh, up there? Okay, because it's like, and then um, I never really knew what was up there. And then folks started, like, posting this, uh, um, I don't know, I forgot her name. The woman who tattoos everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, with the Kalinga folks. And I was like, oh, that's tight. She's up in those mountains. But I don't know what my tribe is. That's tight, though. That's cool. And then, um... One year, I went to Australia for like a their summer. I like to say a summer, but it was January. Alexa, stop! Oh, you said it? you said Australia, and I think she thought uh, you said Alexa. Uh, oh, word! That's hella funny. <laughs> stop eavesdropping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. In Australia, my one of my. Uh, grandpa's older sister stays out there mm. and she's older than my grandpa so she's seen more of the mountain that we used to have apparently and so my last name is mayupal no one else has that last name i'm only like the i think the third or fourth generation to have said last name because i was asking her about that like yo where did we even get our name she was like there was a time we didn't have that someone made it up like there was a generation a couple like she, Either my great grandpa was the first to have that last name or his parents. And that was it. Because there was the generation that left the tribes, that left living that life and came to the city. And then, you know, we're here now. But uh, apparently, um, on one of the mountains up in like Baguio, that was like our land. And there's like a whole ass this thing because 
we lost said land. And like all Filipinos, we all talk about land we once had, this, this, and that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, you know, yeah, my family feels a certain way about that. And my grandpa's the only person who has a bit of the last bit of that land. And he's hella funny. He mentioned that in Australia. But uh, it's just, it's, it's crazy because all, like, when I ask people about it in my family, they always talk about, yeah, like, we had land at one point, and then the government came in and took shit, too. Like, there's a lot of that that happened. And then, uh, you know. Do you know what, like, indigenous group uh, your family was from? Oh, the East Neg. East Neg. The East Neg folks, they're up there in the Cordilleras, too. Mm-hmm. I don't know what exact area we're from because they span throughout that mm-hmm. region. But it's interesting because the East Neg folks, who are also related to the Eat Neg folks, they are the same. They they were at war with the Kalinga for a long time, apparently. Like this is all shit I read. They could be false, and that's a whole nother story. <laughs> that's a whole. I don't even want to get that's, into that. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, supposedly, what I've read on the internet, and you know, that's my source here, that uh, the Kalinga and the East Neg folks were like rival tribes who fought but at some point in history there came a treaty so they low-key became one tribe so it's interesting and i think about it and i look at like wang od's like her her age and i was like huh there's a small chance she could have known my great grandpa Mm -hmm. if not my great grandparents i was Mm -hmm. like that's pretty interesting to know Mm -hmm. Especially because the Kalinga tribe specifically never stopped teaching their generations. The East Neck did, of tattoos and shit like that. And that's like a whole thing. A whole ass thing. Yep, yep. Yeah, like some people be getting mad if you pull up with an indigenous Filipino tattoo. And I, I get it. It's interesting, though. Yeah. Because even like, you know, not to get too into it, but even the credibility of said designs is still suspect. And I'm mm-hmm. like, eh, y'all do what you want. I like the perspective now of some folks who do not purport that this is authentic quote unquote filipino tattoos right <laughs> and they acknowledge right hey this is not like the how would i say it's a rep it's a it's inspired by it right and that's the perspective versus other folks who might say this is the authentic shit. Yeah, man. There's no right. true actual way of knowing that. I'll be honest with yeah. you because, let's be honest, a lot of folks who are getting these said, and, you know, like a lot of the ethics here, which I don't, you know, I don't even do what you want. That's how I feel. Whatever. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. But there's a lot of folks be like, yo, why did you get that? Were you even of that tribe? Does it even matter? Where are your folks from? And I'm like, hey, chill, bro. Some people don't know. And it's not their fault. And that's the weird shit about being Filipino is, man, like, there's a hell of people, like, always trying to get on people, how Filipino are you? Hmm. But to what level, bro? Like, the ind- the indigenous shit's at that extreme. Like, yo, bro, is this even your fucking tribe, bro? Dude, like, I lightweight got into it on Twitter with some, <laughs> with some folks who be, like, really, like, kind of academic privilege on wokeness in terms of like look at these papers and the filipino tattoos and why this tattooer is problematic versus another tattooer and then the person that they were calling out had actually been embraced and vetted by some indigenous community leaders i actually know what situation you're talking about i don't that's not for me to talk on it but i think i know what you mean Uh, i think i know who you're talking about yeah and then I was like, what? I was like, all right. And then I actually hit up another homegirl who is indigenous. And she was like, what the fuck is this woke ass? Like, fucking just mean, call out shit on Twitter about like. What are we mad about today? Boy? Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and she was like, yo, this tattooer has been embraced by some of the community leaders of the indigenous groups in this area. Done their work and is not fucking prissy about being the not touting themselves as the authentic representative of it all right like why are you capping yeah, and, so and hard that's like the thing right because right? the actual indigenous people still living in the philippines like they're just being culture exploited bro yes and yes. it's like damn dog yes that's why as someone who is indigenous to an extent i don't claim it 
Because let's mm-hmm. be honest here. I'm a Filipino American living mm-hmm. here, born here. Mm-hmm. I will acknowledge that's my blood and that is my ancestry. But it's weird to like get possessive of my history mm. because it's like, dog, I, I have a life here. Mm. And what I, which was dope to me, uh, the last time I was in Mindoro and I met my grandpa's brother. So this is that indigenous line, the Mayupal line. He was telling me. Hey, uh, tell, tell your tell your grandpa to get his ass over here. He's supposed to die here. Hmm. Like, he's from this land. He better remember that. He's from here. But you guys, you guys are special. You guys are actually on a faraway land that none of us have ever been to, and we never thought we could have. Because when we were on a mountain, we didn't know that there was something outside that ocean. Hmm. And the, well, given that perspective of, like, you know, How'd some indigenous kid end up in the Bay Area? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what he meant by like, you guys are special. You guys have another land out there that's y'all's now. And he didn't mean that in like a condescending way yeah, at all. Yeah. But he, he, like, it was dope meeting him. That's, that's my grandpa's little brother. How old is he now? I don't know. I, I haven't been there in a minute. Mm. But it was hella funny because I remember when I saw him, like, damn, you look like grandpa, just hella buff because he was younger. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude, like me and my brother, we remember him. Hey, that's Buff Grandpa, right? <laughs> Shit's hella funny, dude. dude. <laughs> <laughs> buff Grandpa. Bro, that's Buff Grandpa. <laughs> real shit, though, real shit. Yeah, yeah this is hella funny, man. But, you know, like my folks back in the Philippines, they're, I don't know how in tune they are with being indigenous, though. A lot of the Mayupal family, apparently, were all teachers in Mindoro. That's like what my great grandpa decided to do. Mm. Which is wild, because he was the first generation outside of, I guess, the mountains or whatever. He was the first generation to be with the other Filipino people. And then uh, he was a, also an, a, an only child. So he inherited dumbass, like, wealth of land, land, like, that we actually, I guess, ancestrally had. I don't know. Like, I have no idea. Like, when I asked my uh, my grandma, my uh, my grandpa's sister about in Australia... All she could tell me was that my great great grandparents were like herbal healers and they made a lot of wealth that way. We had a lot of land and then slowly over time the um actions of my great grandpa we just lost all that land cuz he gave a lot of it away. Like people got mad at him for that. I know I remember they were talking mad shit cuz he gave a lot of his land away to his workers, mm-hmm. to his farm workers. The folks working for him, he gave a lot of that land to them. And obviously, my family feels a way because they would be richer today if he didn't. And in my head, I'm like, damn, he did that shit? That's gangster as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's tight as fuck. That, that's for, and I'm, I'm blessed I met him. I met him once. It was like, I was a kid. I went over there and then uh, they were like, hey, you got to meet your great grandpa. I was like, he's here? Wait, you talking about grandpa's dad? And then it was sick because he he never he didn't even know we were we were like in the country and he was just like wow my great grandkids are here from America that's wild you know mm, mm, it was cool mm. damn <laughs> it was out there in in Mindoro in Mindoro because uh, when we lost a lot of the land in La Union apparently we we fled to Mindoro and that's where we went because mm. we lost a lot of land to a lot of shit I heard a lot of stories like there was even a year we they had to eat locusts it was a whole thing. Like, we just lost all of our crops to fucking locusts. And at the end of the day, we're like, fuck it, we could eat these. Huh. Yeah, the shit my, my grandma, my yeah, my uh, grandpa's sister told me, I was like, damn, that's wild. And she's in Australia. And it's just crazy to think, like, wow, so you made it to Australia. Yeah. And the rest of your family lineage is growing up here. Yeah. That's tight. It's random. Damn, you trying to go do a trip to Australia again? Again, I'd be, I'd totally be down to. I miss my family there. I really do. Cause that was a fun month. That's a, another you beautiful spent a month. Yeah, dude. Another dope thing about being a barber is, you know, I didn't have to tell nobody. I just told Ed, the owner, hey, I'll be gone for a while, and then he's like, cool. When did you go? When was this? It was a January. I don't know which year, but it was a January, maybe two or three years ago. It was basically the whole month of January. She was lit as fuck, dude. And like, all I did was just tell Ed I'll be gone. I paid my rent for the month, even though I wasn't there because you still got to handle shit. Yeah. And then told everyone, yeah, I'll be gone. Well, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> or grow it out for a month. You know what I'm saying? I got the homies. You can hit the homies. You know that. If you really need to, I'll be back. I'll be back later, bro. And I just had a whole ass like time out there because January there is summer. It was hot as fuck. It was dope, though. 
Australia is beautiful. What's funny is I actually have family in Australia. Are they in Sydney? I have no fucking idea. Because okay, okay. I've never... And some family members I've never even met. Right? It's just... That's how the... Uh, immigration life works, right? In the Philippines, sometimes you end up just where the opportunities are. Yeah, right? 100%. Like, I have yeah. family out in England, actually, and out in Australia. Fuck, I have like a niece now out in England that I've never met. That's the sad part, I would say, about immigrating, being an immigrant, uh, the international family dynamic where... <laughs> It's just spread apart. And ideally, I wish that we had grown up together, right? There's a family dynamic that I see with some Filipino families. That's why I love being invited to some Filipino parties of friends of friends and stuff like that. Because it feels like home yeah. where <laughs> the whole fucking family comes out. You got like 10 cousins and their kids and like aunties and uncles drinking. And what's funny is that... Every Filipino party, no matter the family, for the most part, feels the same. Like, I can feel at home at different Filipino parties. Like, yeah, I know where to go. It's just a culture. Like, yeah. Where are you? Are you in the garage? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are where the are kids you, bro? Over there, right? Yeah. yeah bro, oh, then I go to the dog. backyard, I'll, I'll use the same jokes I used to all the other titas, right? Like, yeah. fucking, uh, they'll ask me if I have a girlfriend, and then I'll be making the same jokes. I'll go to the food, <laughs> let me joke about the food and the fucking diet diabetes and the heart pr blood the pl the high blood pressure jokes like and it's you'll see the kids running around in their little group bro so that's it feels like fuck, home dude. right that's it feels like fucking fuck. home and but that's not what i had because even like right now in the bay area is just me my mama and my sister right oh uh, that's right where's the rest of your family at do you have a lot still in hawaii uh, just like or LA three, three, like an auntie and two cousins. LA, I just got one cousin, <clears throat> one aunt. I got aunt and cousins that moved to like the East Coast in um North Carolina, I think. And then, fuck, I have cousins that I've, I've only met once that grew up in like South Carolina or something. They got like that twang. Ah, I, I, sick, I was like, bro. damn, you got a fucking like Southern accent. And then I got cousins that grew up in New York. Like, I'm grateful I have a good relationship with them. I got to visit <laughs> them, like, a few yeah. weeks ago. And just the trip of, like, yo, we vibe so well together, but we grew up on opposite ends of the, the country. Yeah. And we were thinking about, like, how come we be similar? And I think there's something about the culture of my grandparents that kind of filtered down right to their kids and then to us right to our parents and to us and it's interesting and you know mix it with filipino culture too that they've been able to retain and it's just i'm grateful that i have that relationship with them but it's different fucking growing up in a block with your cousins you know you feel me no, definitely right definitely. like i have some friends where down in la I would go to their house party, and it's just a fucking, just all the cousins, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? I'd be, <laughs> it was funny slash weird, but I get it. Like, I'd be fucking dirty dancing with this girl. It's like, and it's then I'm cousin, like, bro. it's his cousin. And I remember <laughs> going out to the backyard. I'd be like, hey, bro, oh, we, we good about this? <laughs> you chill on that. That's ask her hell out and funny, shit. bro. Right? And I'd be asking if he's cool, if I could take and her like, out. they're like, damn, why don't I fucking invite this fucker? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this girl. Homie was like, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Like that. Oh, <laughs> bro, that's hella funny. And, it's, and the fucking dance floor is their living room. We turn down the lights and they have it all set up with the fucking club lights. and Everybody fucking... looking at your boy like, hey, bro, <laughs> you invited this guy here? <laughs> bro. It, it's funny. It's funny. And then I ended up going on a date with the other cousin that I met at that party. Like... It was, and she worked at Jollibee in LA. Like, <laughs> just all the connections, but it was all love, you know? Like, 
they all grew up similar generation and they all lived like almost on the same block right yeah, and that's an energy that's an energy and I think uh, when I was chopping up with the homie Joe, like it made him realize, yo, it is a blessing to have um, all his cousins around or growing up in that way. When I explained that I didn't have that and that I lo- love that aspect, though, right? Yeah. And how I can feel at home at his family parties, right? And just let, let me feel the vibe. Let me feel. Yeah, just that yeah. energy again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's hella comforting. It's hella chaotic. Those Filipino parties. It's parties, fucking loud, bro. Fucking loud. It's and fucking chaotic, loud, bro. But it's very fucking calming for me for some reason. Yeah, you know you're safe. Yeah. It's pretty dope. Like, yeah. it's loud as hell. And we're like, this is where we're at. Yes. Oh, <laughs> you know, one day, um, I think I might have had like a mini anxiety attack. I don't know if that was the day, but basically I was just tripping, right? And then I came home, and then my mama upstairs was on the phone with my auntie, right? And they be talking in that auntie tone, you know, that auntie tone of like, yeah, bro. They're not mad at each other; they're just talking That's like that, we, yeah, right. But it was mad comforting. Where you just I was heard just, that in a minute. Yeah, yeah, and I was just sitting on the couch, just like listening, like and just relaxing, hearing that. And it was a trip. I was like, "Am I being comforted just with this fucking tone that you would think sounds annoying?" <laughs> you just right? haven't heard that shit. I, as but well. I just haven't heard it in a while, and that felt comforting. <laughs> and at home, I was like. Cool, I like this, right? And it's interesting that I had that vibe, right? Uh, And then the fucked up part is that sometimes I catch myself speaking like that, right? Mom, what the? I was like, damn, that came out of me. That came out of me, bro. Like, whoa, who let that out? (laughs) Fuck, I have an inner auntie in me, a fucking inner Tita Christian, bro. Damn, who let her out? <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, the Filipino culture vibe that I do appreciate. And there is a difference I do see, right? And accepting the difference of Filipino Americans. You know, like you said, you have this understanding of being Filipino American. Yeah, right. man. And I, I actually wonder about this sometimes because uh, when it comes to generationally me being here, uh, yeah, so let me ask you real quick so I could clarify how the fuck I'm going to say this, but what is a first generation here? What does that mean? Okay, so um, there's two ways that people look at it, but I think the good argument is uh, first generation is you're the first to immigrate. Right, as in so you are the immigrant. immigrant itself. You're okay. the immigrant yeah, 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 itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they also have the term 1.5 generation, which I consider myself. Is that I immigrated at a young age, right, around eight, ten, twelve, right, where pretty much most of your development phase is here, right. You have kids that immigrated at fucking two years old, three years old, right. Yeah, yeah, so they're yeah. technically an immigrant. But culturally, culturally, yeah, exactly. it's hard to say, right? It's a whole thing. Um, that's why they also have um, third culture kid. I think that's what they call it, where you don't have your homeland's culture fully, but you've uh, taken in, say, America's culture, but you're also seen as an other still. No, yeah, right. like that's so, something that needs to be talked about sometimes because uh, there's a lot of folks who like feel a certain way because they're not as Filipino. Yeah. And I'd be like, good, just whatever that is, then cool. Yeah. Accept it, bro. Yeah. Like, don't let motherfuckers like tell you that, oh, you didn't grow up right. Yeah, but at the you same time, it's like you're not Filipino enough, then you ain't American, right? Yeah, there's you're, like a fucked like, up in between right there. Yeah, you know yeah, what that's saying? why like, those people feel like they don't have that home they on that third culture kid type of vibe right and i think that's that 1.5 generation right and i really relate to that in the sense like bruh when i go to home to the philippines i know i ain't 
on that struggle, right? I still love the Philippines and I consider myself Filipino. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I do consider myself Filipino American in that aspect. Even if I fucking go back to the Philippines all the time, I can speak the language. I do community work that honestly and I'm exposed to a lot of of the Philippines that honestly a lot of Manileños are not exposed to because What is that? Like Manila kids, right? Manila, yeah, that's the you know, whole thing. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, you can thing. live a very westernized American life in Manila and in the big cities, right? That you're not exposed to the... Especially if you're economically privileged. You're living your life in the malls, speaking English. Some motherfuckers be growing up in Manila and not knowing how to speak Tagalog or Filipino. Are you serious? Fuck okay. yeah, there's a lot now, bro, and it's sad. Okay, that, okay now that is a whole nother... Cause That's there, a whole nother You know nother what I'm saying? If you're here... Because, like, okay, I, I may have maybe have talked about this before, how motherfuckers be getting on me for not knowing Tagalog, and I look at them like, bold of you to assume we even speak that. Mm-hmm. Ooh, my bad. Go ahead. But so, you know okay. what I'm saying? But if you're in, you are in the Philippines and... Uh, <laughs> it's a class thing that's though, that's bro. different it's what a class fuck? thing that, that is crazy that's that, not okay <laughs> that's not okay in my opinion that is not okay bro uh, and but you see it because of a glorification of western standards and it's a class thing of how well you speak english is still viewed as a class symbol of, of how rich you are, how well off you are, how cultured you are on how well you speak English. To the point where, like, even in the Philippines, they don't speak Tagalog. Some. Some, right? That's some kids, weird, Some bro. kids are growing up uh, not knowing how to speak Tagalog, especially if they go to international schools in Manila. Wow, right? They yeah. go to the private schools where majority of the folks speak English. English, right? And they can be so isolated and so um, just exposed to those people because it's like a bubble, right? And that's why I be on my nephew, like, uh, like, bro, what languages do you need to know? English and Filipino, like that. He said Filipino. He said yeah. He Filipino. says or, or Tagalog, like that. He'll say that shit because I'm I'm telling him, and he's not. Honestly, he's not that good at Tagalog. Like, I'm better at it than That's him. That's weird, and bro. It, and it sucks, That's right? something I'm just hearing right now. I didn't know it was like that. Oh, there's a lot. There's a the lot. The fuck, there's, bro? There's a, that's yeah, why. I didn't even know that, dude. Motherfucker, that's why Like, I can get away with, like, if I go to different parts of the Philippines and they're like, oh, you're an, you have an accent. Where are you from? Like, honestly, I'm from the U.S., but also I could get away by saying, bro, I'm from Manila. Like, I'm a Manilenio, sorry. That's weird. Like, I have an accent when I speak Tagalog because now there are a lot of people in Manila who grew up there who are privileged that do not speak Tagalog that well. Right? See that? Yeah, that, that ain't right, bro. <laughs> yeah. And then you have Filipino-Americans who want to know how That's to speak Tagalog, That's what I mean. Tagalog, like, right? yeah. And it's fucked up. That the educational system, at least from a lot of the people I've talked to, pushed away from us speaking Filipino at home. And our parents were encouraged not to speak to us in Filipino or Tagalog or another Filipino language because of the fear of being ostracized and wanting to assimilate, right? Our parents' generation had this fear that we would be looked at as other because of our accent i had friends my homie bro he was speaking um he was understanding tagalog at home but he was like a quiet kid and the teacher directly said to his parents hey stop speaking to him in another Damn, language bro, that's English, wild. because he seems shy like that the fuck of course they grew up in a very white area but like what kind of fucked up shit is that right and you know, it's not like our parents had ethnic studies like, to, yeah, man. to like, understand the implications of loss of language, right? Because I'll be feeling like folks be t- going into ethnic studies and be hella mad at the world. But you got to understand, like, yo, like <laughs> chill. Yo, your fucking parents did not know better, okay? Like, yeah. chill. Mm. Like, you can't just be mad at shit. Be wondering why the world ain't perfect all the damn mm. time. Like, mm. 
<laughs> Shit. We on a path of healing, but on that path of healing requires us to put our pride to the side and have empathy for our parents that they are imperfect human beings because of the conditions that they had to live under. Pretty much, man. I think about that all the time. And what I'm like blessed about as like as weird as my uh, relationship with my parents is, I'm glad they never pushed me to do anything. Hmm. As in, they didn't like expect me to fucking, you know, I don't know, you know, become whatever the fuck other Asian parents want their kid be you know what i'm saying like they just hope that uh, okay hopefully this kid's smart enough to not fuck up you know what i'm saying <laughs> but they, they knew though like they also did know that, like all right our kids are gonna have opportunities we will never have you know you know what i'm saying and like they just they have enough faith in us to be, that they're not gonna dictate our lives the way some other parents do mm, which is mm. that's you know, i see it i see that shit all the time that's like, good to hear what's interesting to share is that my mom had a had a very strong like hey be a doctor or be a lawyer or like <laughs> these big things right be yeah, a nurse yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. and like really pushing that and i have my own issues with that but then my dad was very like do what makes you happy kind of thing but i really feel that there's a middle ground i really feel like a part of me wishes my dad pushed me a little bit more <laughs> And um, I wish that my mom encouraged uh, a little bit more of that same mentality of grind, but with things that I actually enjoyed, right? Yeah. Rather than what other people have done successfully, like in terms of nursing and things like that. Damn, I just sound like a complainer, right? Like, no, no. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah. but I'm just thinking of, yes, there, there is a balance to things. Both sides, like the opposite of crazy on the other end of the spectrum is still crazy. Huh. Yeah, right? Yeah. There is a balance. That's <laughs> right. There is oh like God, a, a tempered way of approaching things. And, I've been really thinking of this aspect of um, reparenting ourselves. Oh, big, big, big. I'm big glad you that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And acknowledging that there are those, the term, quote unquote, inner child, right? Yeah, there are right. different aspects of ourselves that arguably maybe is stuck in one age, right? And I'd be telling myself that simp kid in me, that kid that wants that fucking romantic love and I'm going to win you over with my grand gestures. Yeah. It's this 12-year-old, 13-year-old motherfucker that has only seen things through the aspect of movies, right? All right 100%, let's see. dude. I feel you. Yeah, wow. All right. We have our guest uh, Mr. Mugsai Sai what up, on bro? the podcast. What do you have to say, my sir? Love always. <laughs> <laughs> and that is just a suggestion, not a piece of advice, right? <laughs> no, that, that is advice. Oh, that is advice. Love always, Love always man. Advice. Love always. Even if you've got to cut off a friends with benefits situation. <laughs> Do it with love and say that you have love for them and let them know love. that you care. It's still love. It's just a different type of love. And it's a, <laughs> it's a clarification type of love that this ain't healthy for me anymore, but I still want to be with you. I have to let you know I want to be with you. I want to be that one that supports you. But if you ain't there right now, for me in that way and be that person for me it's all love and i gotta step away but love always it's love in all ways always mm. <laughs> see what you did there love bro. always in all the ways uh okay what's good are we gonna grab dinner yeah did you guys want burmese burmese sounds good what they're, you they're not closed on tuesdays are they I have no idea. Shout out to our sponsor. Let me check. Um, sponsor is uh, Taste of Burma. Let's Where's see. that from? Local right here. Oh, it sure. says they're open. Closes 8 p.m. All right, cool. 
All right. All right. You gonna you gonna swing? You gonna order? You want me to order? What's good? Uh, I'll order. You guys can swing. Okay. Yeah. Put in the order. Uh, let me know what time, and then we'll swing and head to your spot. All right. Cool. Uh, we're on our way back. We should be there in like twenty minutes. But um, you know, let me know when you guys are all done and looking to go. No, we're done. We could. I mean, we're just chilling, doing our podcast. He's actually. About to finish. Looks like the piece <laughs> yeah. that he be uh, painting. So I was just painting the whole time, bro. Basically, yeah. yeah we did like a creative <laughs> secret session podcast while uh, he be painting, and uh, you caught me right before I got into the simp session. We'd be talking about um, reparenting ourselves, and yeah, there's some good shit, bro. There's some stuff to unpack, brother. I I. All right, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put the order in uh, in about five minutes, and then you mind getting it? No, it yeah, 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 we got it, and then it should be good in, what, like 15 minutes or so? Yeah, yeah. All right, and then we'll swing. Uh, what do y'all want? <laughs> uh, uh, whatever. Whatever's fire. He said whatever's fire. Uh um, Mango salad, and then probably also some meat thing that we could share with the Priyatha. Pri- pri- yeah, the yeah. Pratha. Yeah. All right, for sure. All right. See you in a bit, right, broski. I'll see you. Peace. All right, yay, peace. Yay. All right. On some reparenting shit. Yeah, man. Talking about how... We can be the parent and the guide and the mentor that that younger part of us needed. Well, right? well actually, what is that like to you? Because I I've been doing it, but obviously I know my way. But I yeah. see people talk about it all the time. Okay, okay. Like, Let me know? tell you my way, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you can tell me yours. What I, in terms of practical step, that I actually do is I try to ask myself. What part of myself is feeling this or the younger part of myself is feeling this, whether it's despair or need for approval or wanting to win over this girl or feeling lonely, right? What part of me is that? And I, like I said, I think that part is this 12, 13 year old young guy who thinks of hopeless romantic he (laughs) associates himself with that term which side note i do not like that term right i actually think (laughs) of being a realistic romantic i like romance and accepting that but now i'm in a realistic romance type of vibe um but also acknowledging that and then being the voice like what would i tell that little kid i was like hey little bro it's i right feel that but here are some kind of perspectives and realities like i'm actually imagining myself as that young kid and if i were a mentor and i'm glad i've been in mentor positions now and i've said similar pieces of advice but what would i tell him and i've actually journaled it right i would say hey to the 12 year old in me who's feeling a b and c here's my list of advice right and i would write that out and i feel it's actually helped And that's a part of me that, that's a practice that I've tried and it's been helpful. Sometimes I'll just sit and think, huh, to that. And another part is maybe to that 17 year old who's scared of business, but has entrepreneurial ideas, like who doesn't really know what, here's some pieces of advice. Because I still feel that fear sometimes when I'm saying doing my coffee or I want to do some investment projects and I feel that fear like I ask huh where is that coming from it's that 17 or sometimes that 22 year old who has this drive but is so fearful because he hasn't had role models to uh, look up to as a business leader right yeah. and I'm giving that that those pieces of advice that is for him But is now in the present what I need to hear because that younger part of myself needs to hear that, right? So that's how I approach reparenting. 
How about you? That's pretty dope. Okay. Because, yeah, I would, the reason why I ask you that is because obviously everyone has like a different part of whatever they need to reparent. Mine, in my case, was I guess I just grew up too damn fast. And there, when I was younger, I don't know if you felt a certain way, but I was always in a rush. Like, nah, I need to get the fuck out of this school. Why am I here? I'm wasting my time. Like, I was never really living in the now as a kid. Not really, not really. But, I, you know, I had the, the whole hope. So, yo, bro, one day, yo, we're going to get it right. And then life's going to be nice, you know, if I have this, if I have that. There was, like, some weird conditional thinking that when I, when I grow older and I figure things out then, like, yo, life's going to be tight. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. If the kids listen to me now, he'll, he'll already know. Hell nah. Nah, there's other shit to, to figure out. But at the same time, it's like I didn't have a normal childhood because I was always in a rush to just, all right, let's, you know, let's, let's grow up. I was so quick to grow up. And then now I'm at a point where I, that's why I do this. You know, it's pretty tight because uh, another thing some folks don't know is I took 10 years off from art. Mm. Like, I completely stopped doing art for a long, long time. And that was the kid in me who just got shut away. Because I was too busy, couldn't hear. I was way too busy trying to get my uh, financials out. Because I grew up dumbass poor, you feel me? So I was just like, you know, why would I stay here, you know? There was a whole lot of that. And a whole lot of my creativity dipped in all that process. Mm. And I, you know, there was a moment in time where, uh, you know, I was working at the shop and I was like, damn, it was a weird emptiness because I was like, I don't have a goal no more. Mm. I don't have anything because my whole has my in my head growing up. It's like, yo, this high school shit's in my fucking way. I just need to get out of here so I can go get my L's and go cut. And when I was doing it, then it was a whole lot of, damn, I'm only 19. Now what? Which was, you know, it's weird to say that because you're not, you're not supposed to be done with college at 19. Like, that's just, nah. But everyone else, they had some kind of obstacle in their way. And I, that was when I felt my life was definitely going in a whole different direction from all my other friends. Because obviously we all took a different route. But then, you know, four years done passed and it was just strange. I was like, damn, I'm really, uh, what happened to that kid in me? What was fun, you know? So coming back to this was like a way of like, I'm going to let him do it. Mm, you're allowing that young kid to have that creative fun now. Yeah, I'll let him. Like, I tell people sometimes, sometimes that ain't me, bro. Like, I just let the kid do it. Hmm. I just let the kid do it. I'm just here guiding this 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 paintbrush, but hmm. the kid's here doing it. It's whatever hmm. he wanted to do. Hmm. Like, you know, a lot. like even that, I've probably drawn that many times in fourth, fifth grade. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like constantly in my works today. So that in terms of in terms of people listening to podcasts, it's a piece that you did that I just got from you. Um, my bit first big art purchase and it'll be the first certified. <laughs> yeah, man, I can't wait, fuck, bro. Yeah. And <laughs> real talk, this shit's gonna fucking um in terms of what's that word? Appreciate and value. I I have a feeling. No, no, and yeah, and I, I hope know. it does. Uh, Cause it's my fucking watch. I'm gonna drop this in a rap <laughs> in a few years, and fucking so, yeah. of the fucking Jay Z type shit. <laughs> no lie. the richest pieces. Do you have one with no. a certificate, uh, bitch? I got the first one. No, no, because that's what I mean. Like, hella people out there have my work, but sometimes it's just here, bro. I just don't want it no more. Mm -hmm. Kind of because I can't keep all of my stuff, bro. Like, mm -hmm. nah, just. That's actually how I got one of the that piece. You feel me? Just, yeah, yeah. We can't it's, hold it's, on to this stuff, dude. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, like when we give it away, it's really just like here, because I've I've given away stuff, especially if it was just a a, a quick ass study that yeah. you might think so cool, but to me it's like like literally this is me studying. I, did I take this seriously? No, I was talking to you the whole last time. But if <laughs> I give this away, like here, bro. Yeah, you know. But you know, I wouldn't like cert certify this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the whole thing. Well, if we print this on a shirt. No, yeah, see, I mean, because I want to do shit like that. I want to make a shirt where uh, it is a, a postcard and there'll even be a stamp thing on it. Like, mm. I want, you know what I'm saying? And you know how, like, the, the, the postal service, when they, when they stamp it, so it has the approval that it went through their system? Mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that shit looks tight to me. That mm. shit looks hella tight. Mm -hmm. But, uh. But I feel in terms of that, like, allowing that kid to have fun. Yeah, dude, because 
you got to, yeah, that has to happen. You got to enjoy life, man. And if you're not enjoying life, you got to assess what that is. And maybe the kid in you isn't enjoying her. You know, because there was a point moment in my time I was like, damn, bro, I wanted to be old so bad. Now I'm fucking old. Now what? <laughs> you know, like, you know, how do I retain some of who I was? And I'm still that goofy kid back in the day. But when I tell people, like, the prime of my art years ain't, like, now. It's not now. Like, I told them, that creativity from seventh grade, whatever the fuck that kid was going through, yo, that kid was dope. He had boundless creativity. He didn't care. He did not care. He was out there. He just wanted to do shit, wanted to make a mark. And I look up to that kid. So I let him do what he wants to do sometimes. There's times when I'm not trying to study something. I just, we're going to find out. I literally start drawing and whatever the fuck happens, he did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, that's how I see it at least. And it was also cool because uh, what, what helped a lot too was uh, when I was in Japan for like just two weeks. I was out there with uh, one of my homies, my brother, my cousin. His name is Ross. He and I grew up together when we were kids. And I remember in like fourth, fifth grade, we were like, hey, bro, one of these days, we're going to find our way to Japan somehow. We're going to do it. And when he joined the Air Force, he, he requested to, be, to go to Japan. Yeah, and dope. it actually went through. And he, his ass, he was the first person he called. He, when he got there, he called me. He was like, hey, Rich, guess what? What? I'm eating at a 7-Eleven in Japan right now. And I was like, well, holy shit. And he's like, yeah, you better get over here. Like, I got you. And when we were there, it was like a whole moment we had during our, our uh, road trip ride from Tokyo to Osaka. That was like 12, 13 hours. And we were like, yo, bro, we're not the kids no more. But right now we are. Uh, like, we're the kids who mm, got here. And mm. like, we hella like, damn, mm. bro, that... That did happen. Mm. Then, like he and, and I, it, and it was those kids in you that were enjoying that ride. Hundred yeah. percent, dude. Because yeah. then, like, he was so mm -hmm. used to see me. Because just the military sucks, bro. It just mm -hmm. fucking sucks, and he just hated working. And he's like, "Damn, finally, someone who I know know who knows me is out here. Finally, mm -hmm. it's not just his military homies. You know what I'm saying? So he was just like, "Wow, this is us. We made it here." Like, the kids who we, we said was going to come here one day, we really did. And then uh, on my uh, ride back to America, I, I'm glad I brought with me a journal. So I, I wrote tough because I had a 12-hour layover, bro. That shit was a long fucking time. So I had plenty of time to just reflect. And so I wrote a letter to that seventh grade kid. Mm. I was mm. like, yo, bro, we made it. Ross says, what's up? Like... And then I was just like, whatever the fuck you felt you needed to do, you did it, and I got here to make sure you won. So in your universe, however you're living, I hope you're having fun and to run that. If you want to exist here with me through art, we can run it together, but I, you can be a kid now. I'll tell you right now, the future looked dope. We did it. We fucking did it. Go have fun. Because mm. I don't really think I did. As a kid, not all the time, you know, but it was dope. I was like, yo, we did it, bro. We did it. Well, that shit was sick, man. Ever since then, I was like, all right, if he's here with me, we're going to take this art world together. We're going to mm. see what happens, bro. Mm. Damn, that just made me think of some metaphysical multiverse shit in terms of you like doing <sighs> yeah, for, dude. for that kid, right? To let them live as they want to live. Because you're giving them that ease, right? That's some fuck shit when I'm thinking about where I was in seventh grade. <laughs> uh, damn, I was still girl fucking crazy. Yeah, it's, bro, it's definitely. Crazy. Like, it's you crazy. Know. I'm in such a <laughs> different spot now of self-awareness of my own bullshit. But man, to think how girl fucking crazy. Like, I don't have any other memories from seventh grade except video games and girls. My Same. fucking high school and, and middle school crushes. That was all my world evolved. And gambling. Play, <laughs> play, uh, playing Viet. 
I also grew up uh, around a um, bunch of Viet folks. Oh, you were playing there. fucking Tian Lin 13 and shit? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bro, lo- oh. that's, that's all shit. Oh, all let's shit. play, bro. <laughs> we'll play a dollar a game, bro. It's funny because when people ask, well, when Filipinos ask me to play Pasoy, I'm like, I kind of know, but I don't. I know the Vietnamese version. And they look at me like, huh? <laughs> It's pretty much the same. You just have that's to what change. everyone says. Yeah. You've, it's yeah. basically the same. Yeah, but it's I was just, just change like, of the sweets. It's like I literally grew up with Filipinos. I mean, with Vietnamese folks, bro. So it's just yeah. how it is. Damn. <laughs> a dollar game. I ended. I think eighth grade. Forty dollars in debt. <laughs> <laughs> that's lit, bro. That's that's what I'm talking about. It's so man. stupid. But wow, that made me think in terms of like what are the things that that kid wanted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then putting in the work. And I think that's healing. I think that's healing in terms of putting in the work now to get what that kid and I have this term like quote unquote original self, right? Who is that original self in you? That's a that, great way. Of, yeah. That yeah. that was there right in your existence but has been kind of layered on by society, layered on by insecurities or experiences or trauma or whatnot. And how can you get back to that original self? And how can you operate from that now? And it's a cool little question to ask myself at times, right? Because I feel that I can operate from that and it's a motherfucking goofy ass loving kid, right? But then at times, uh, I feel the layers, right? The layers of society, the layers of insecurity, the layers of um, uh, uh, the uh, the fear of vulnerability, right? To show that original self. But it is a practice to be able to get to that and to live through that, right? And and let that motherfucker express himself. Right. Yeah, dude. That's like, that's also that's what I mean by it's weird when people ask me about my art because you gotta understand where it came from. Mm. And it's like, yo, like, yeah, like sometimes that's what I mean. But it's not me. I'm letting him do his shit. Uh, like, interesting. So you feel the art, the artist in you. Yeah, because sometimes kid. it's not yeah. me. Like sometimes I really give credit to that guy because sometimes dead ass they were his ideas. I'm just mm. old enough to do them now. Mm. I'm just old enough and I have the skills to do what he wanted to do. Like, was Mm. that my idea? No, but I banked it in my memory banks for like a whole decade or so. Mm. And then it's like, just now am I able to do something when if if you look far enough and if I have them, you'll see the first sketches from fourth grade. Like, and it's like crazy to tell people that. And then there's the folks who went to school with me like, yo, I remember that. I remember that fish you did. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then that's why I like all the folks who I grew up with in my elementary school. When they saw me do art again, they were like, oh, the real Richmond's back. Mm. It was like, holy fuck, this kid's nice again. Because I was like that guy in school who was hella nice at art. Because I did want to like go to art school. That was originally what I wanted to do. Interesting. But did I do it? No. I'm actually glad I didn't go, if I'm going to be honest. I don't regret not going, which is pretty interesting. Hmm. But, uh, you know, and it was funny because in that in that letter to the kid, I'm like, hey, I'll be honest with you, bro. No, we don't work at Pixar. <laughs> 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 it's all, no, we, did, we didn't make it, but we still made it, bro. Uh, uh, that uh. shit was hilarious because I bet he had a good chuckle out of just like, damn it, we didn't make it. All good. Dude, I want you to actually meet my homegirl Angela. She was also on the podcast, but she like an artist like like you and Joe also. Cause it's interesting. I consider myself an artist, or artistic, but in a different vein from those who also have more of the visual art. Yeah, they are and different. It's different. Yeah. Like um, Joe and I have an overlap with the music, right? But then there's also a different mentality. In, and energy involved with the visual arts and the performance art. Um, and you, Joe, and my homegirl, Angela, there's a different energy that coalesces into that visual aspect that sometimes I don't actually understand. Like, I'm a graph, I would say I'm a good <laughs> graphic designer for marketing. Yeah, you understand like, design. I understand yeah, yeah. design and what looks aesthetically good to put a product out, 
right? I'm like, okay, I can give input there, but there's another, it's like there's the another muscle abstractions. Yeah, <laughs> the abstractions. I can get abstractions with a fucking abstract wordplay. And if we go on some philosophizing on some pedantic bullshit of words, I can mix and mash and find some gold in there. But it's awesome. I have fun listening to the verbalizations of visual artists trying to explain the intricacies of their visual art in word form. Yeah, dude, because there's some people out there, like visual artists, that I'm like, when they when they explain their work, I'm like, damn, that's how you see it? Mm. Because, like, yeah, I don't have too many art friends, sadly, bro. And, like, the art friends I did have growing up, they're, they're all normal people now, dude. And it, <laughs> it fucking sucks, man. Like, say this shit all the time. Like... Damn, y'all just fuck. All right, fine then. I'll do this shit dolo. Uh. Like, you know, because everyone grew up. And then during the years when we were artistic and I was busy cutting hair, I wished I was still active with them. But now, nah, they have fucking bills to pay. They may have kids or two. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, fuck. Damn, your daughter's nice though. Like, you know, my, <laughs> yeah, I got a homie, bro. One of my, well, I mean, like, I was never the best. When I say this, like, I had a homie from kindergarten. He was dope since kindergarten, bro. I looked up to him. His name's Bane Fernando. I wish he comes back. I, I bother him every few months. Like, what's up, man? You, you been doing art? No, he hasn't, bro. But yeah, that's that's the boy. And I tell people, you think I'm nice? Nah, I looked up to this guy since I met him. Mm. Like, mm. yeah, he yeah he busy now, and I, I get it. Like, I definitely get it. But that's what I mean by like when you grow older in this, while doing a craft like this, there may be people who be like, yo, man. Damn, you sure you don't want to just be normal for a change? Mm. As in just have a normal ass life, you know? Kick it with people. Maybe you can find a girlfriend and fucking be normal. <laughs> it's like, here's my ass. I got to go paint real quick, bro. I'll be, you know, this is what I do all fucking day. What's funny is you remind me of this homie in LA who I think is just a great music producer and he even has. He never released his verses and shit, but it's fire, but he just got caught up with a kid. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, you know, and if it happens... It happens. It's, it's still love. You know, I'm still happy for exactly. him. Exactly. It's just, I think, as, I'm, as much of an artist I am in terms of I want to create music, create poetry, I'm actually a bigger fan. I'm a big-ass fan of people that I actually like. And I'm a big fan of some of my friends. Like, I'm like a fucking stan for some of my <laughs> friends that also don't put shit out. Yeah, like, people like that, man. There are, like that. And sometimes, honestly, like, I like them better than the people who put shit out. Like, I have, like, shout out, man, uh, homie Pesa, who passed uh, last year, like, Bro, I feel he was a bigger, better musician in terms of the music that he put out, like, and shared in than a lot of the fucking top 40, bro. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. oh my God. I'm like, yo, don't, yo, yo, stand in these other motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> oh my God, bro. And that's, it, it's, it's almost like a blessing that I was able to see their music while they were here right yeah, 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 yeah. and and share space in that sense but also like i wish i would i'm be like if y'all motherfuckers just knew right and there's a, there's a few people like that yeah. right it's it's an interesting um kind of avenue to think about and also to flip it in terms of like self-awareness and i realized i was like this is how I view music now too. Like I'm not a ta talented, gifted person in terms of the the pat the mediums that I pursue, but I realize like all right, I can stay consistent with it, and that's that's how I develop and grow. And I'm starting to to actually accept the art that I make and have appreciation for the music I make. Because honestly, a, a lot of times before, I was also making music for other people. Yeah, I was making music and always wondering if other people would like it. And then I think there was a flip, maybe from the last 
the last album that I made and it was because I really put that out as a coping thing after my uh, Lola passed, right? Where I was like, I'm gonna make this for me and for my Lola. And I actually like a good number of the songs there. I was like, shit, I, I fucking like that shit on Spotify so it could pop up on my shuffle. Of course, I don't like all of them. <laughs> so I was like, ah, that wasn't that good, right? At least, but now I'm deciding for myself and I'm making this music for myself. And it's, and for that kid actually who needs to hear that music. Yeah, man. There's a whole thing about making art for yourself and like, I, I be trying to tell people like, like, bro, don't. Who gives a fuck? It's hard to it's hard to explain. It's hard like, to do that though, you know. It's hard to not give a fuck, especially with music. Cause I was like that. I can't even be wrong. Like I was like that. I definitely was like that. Especially cause when music's going a certain way, but you're not, and people like look at you like, why are you going this way? Hmm. And you you have to be hard headed, bro. Like you either you know do your own thing and continue to do that, and hopefully you thrive or yeah, go ahead and listen to them, bro. Who knows? Sometimes they're right, bro. You know what I'm saying? You always There's always both sides. Like Sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're trying to tell you something, and hopefully you do listen. Mm. But that's why like, music is definitely like that, because too many people pay attention to it. Mm. Like, like It's funny as fuck, and Joe's one of them, but there's people who be like, hey, Rich, when are you going to put out another mix? And I looked at them like... I don't do that no more, bro. It's like, damn, you still listen to my shit? Like, thank you, I guess. Mm-hmm. And they're all like, Rich, bro, you don't understand. Like, no one mixes like you. No one made the weird beats you did. And then I was like, yeah, no one did. You're right. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, like, you know, that's, to me, it's, it's, it was, there was a whole transition of life where I had to tell people, I don't want to do this no more. Mm-hmm. And folks didn't understand because, to me, my own music was toxic because of, like, just other people and just how I felt about it or how I felt people felt about it or like also it was just talking to my life I needed to sleep at night you know (laughs) there was a a whole bunch of that and then I was like you know like is this worth doing bro all right man let's bounce yeah let's pick up some food um, break bread with some fam but thank you for sharing your art and your yeah, story, man. bro. We'll, we'll chop it up some more. This is right on, bro. I think we have so much more to talk about, brother. Yeah, and this is a quote unquote whatever. <laughs> now, if you want to put it out, sure, or at least bits and pieces. Sure, sure. All I'm just gonna say is because then again, there's always this. I don't know what people are gonna take from this. You know, because but at the same time, if people listen to this and they realize, <laughs> oh, Richmond really is just training, dude. The way I view it. Is that there's so much variety in humanity and also more niche demographic in Filipinos and Filipino Americans. And I enjoy putting these stories out to add to the complexity of us as a community. And also another aspect for those youngins who be lost in the complexity and lost because of a lack of complexity uh, that they see right so this is my when i bring people in here and this is how i view the podcast is it's one it's selfish because i enjoy talking to the people so it's for me no for sure for sure yeah but second also i view it as a service for the youngins to see the different pathways that people be on. For sure that, right? dude. Yeah. And I think that's a necessity. And that's why I push people like, hey, come on and share your story, right? I've like I have this homegirl who I've been telling that for like three years. She's not coming on, but we be <laughs> recording music because she's more of a private person, and it's understandable, right? But I'm playing the long game. She'll eventually be on. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, hey, you got me somehow, somehow, some way. My ass when I was driving, fucking Chris, bro. I'm in traffic right now for his ass right now, like. <laughs> And I hella thought about it. I was like, how did he get me, dude? <laughs> I 
was like, holy. And then, like, I already knew Joe was like, it was bound to happen, bro. It was bound to happen, bro. I knew this was going to happen. Because <laughs> before I met you, Joe already had this in mind. Like, hey, bro, you're going to be on this dude's podcast. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> like, he knew, bro. This shit was hilarious, dog. <laughs> Shout out to Joe because he's oh. actually recommended a lot of people. Oh my God, bro. Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah. Shout out Joe. He's yeah. connected many of us together. Yeah, yeah. Like on some yeah. strange ways, man. Especially like, wow. What the fuck? Yeah, he's a connector. He's a connector. Big facts. Big, Big facts. facts. All right. <laughs>